Hello everyone, Flame here. So I thought I would just come back and uh, make a video on something that a lot of people do not know how to do properly. And it just really pisses me off. So right here you see that I am running a 3D Mark stress test in the background. Key part here is that I'm running a 3D Mark stress test now. The reason why this is important, this is how I do all my overclocks and all of my undervolts, is I use the 3D Mark stress test. The reason I use the 3D Mark stress test is because it is representative of a real world gaming load. So as you see here, it is actually like a real gaming load. It is doing variants and all that. And I just take a look here and I'm at 100% of my TDP right now on power. Now, when you're doing overclocking, especially with cards that are already high in temperature, I generally recommend to just increase your fan speed to 100%, but start at auto if your graphics card isn't that hot, and just do the following. So pay attention to these two temperatures here. So in GPU-Z, make sure that you are paying more attention to this, the hot spot temperature. This should not go at least on an NVIDIA card, above 100C. If it goes above 100C, then you have a problem. Uh, and if your GPU temperature is in like the 80s or the 70s, it usually means you're thermally limited or your graphics card has some sort of thermal bottleneck. It, let it be the paste or the way the card was built, or maybe there's just some sort of variance. But whenever I'm doing overclocking, I always start with a baseline. So right now, I know everything is stable. This has now been running for a minute. So I know that my graphics card is doing the maximum amount of temperature that it can possibly do. So we're just gonna start here with a small overclock on the memory. I know that this is a RTX 3060, so the maximum I can do on the memory is about 1,100 megahertz. But I like that even number. That even number right there of 8,000 is perfect. It will run smoothly, it will run sound. If you run 1,000 or 1,100, that number right there is gonna be uneven. You're also gonna notice that my core clock is uh, dropping when I overclock. And the reason for this is due to the fact that we are already hitting our maximum power limit right here. So this is our power limit, and this is where you would do some undervolting. Now, I actually don't recommend doing your undervolting until you've done at least one or two stress tests to make sure that your first overclock is stable. And then you go and type in a number, like for example, I know for a fact that this graphics card can do plus 150 on the core, so I do plus 150, and now we're getting 1980 megahertz on the core, and we're not dropping our frequency that much. Uh, it's going to vary a bit though. You see, we don't have enough voltage and usually that's the problem. You're gonna hit power limit on almost every single Nvidia card. That's just how it is. And I don't like how high that power draw is. 170 watts is quite high. Um, obviously a, a 40 series card is going to be even higher than this or an AMD card is gonna be even higher than this. Now. The two things that you're going to want to enable inside of MSI Afterburner when you are doing your undervolting slash overclocking process is unlock voltage control and unlock voltage monitoring. Without the voltage control, you will be basically just shooting in the dark and the program will have no idea what your graphics card is actually capable of. So as you can see, 150 megahertz is stable as well as 500 on the memory so what we do is once you found a stable overclock that doesn't crash the stress test at stock power consumption you go into the curve editor and inside of this curve editor you want to have gpu z open with the perf cap reason and it should be power and nothing else if it's anything else then you need to lower the overclock but if it is only power, then you're good to do this. So let's just say, all right, 150 is the maximum overclock we can do. So now we do minus 150 and then we hit enter. Now we do not hit apply because that would just undo our overclock. 
what we do is we find a medium. So I know for a fact that this graphics card can do 983 millivolts. So we find the 980, well 987 is close enough. So we'll take 987 and then it was boosting during this test to around 900 and 1970-ish megahertz and then we bring it up. Now obviously there's going to be some fluctuation here. It's not going to be perfect because there's something going on here. And if you get this issue where it doesn't want to stay at that consistent clock speed, it just means you have too high of an overclock. So we're going to undo that overclock now that I just did. And we're going to make sure that it is back to the original way it was. So 500 on the memory and we'll do zero on the core. We'll go back do minus 150 and we will pick a lower number. So I'm going to pick 950 is usually a good spot to start on an NVIDIA card. So start at around 950 millivolts and just increase that to about what your clock speed was. So for me, that's 1970. As you can see, we're still hitting power limit. So obviously we're still asking for far too much out of this card at this voltage. So we have to go even lower. So I'm gonna set this back to zero, just so that we know that it's at zero. And we're gonna do again, minus 150 on the clock. And we're gonna go down to 925 on the core. And we're gonna go to, we aren't gonna go as high as we went before. We're gonna go to 1950 megahertz. There we go. Finally, after all that time, we found a stable undervolt. So let this run for a little bit, but as you can see, our graphics card, the power consumption has dropped by a total of 20 watts. Before we were hitting 170, now we're hitting 150, 160. So we dropped our power consumption and now our clock speed is rock solid and it is not moving at all. This is how you do a proper undervolt and a proper overclock. People do not understand how to do this and they either just overclock without undervolting at the same time causing higher temperatures and clock speed fluctuations and they also don't use 3D Mark. 3D Mark is basically a game. It literally runs on DirectX 12. So if you're using a benchmark like Heaven or some other benchmark like uh, all that, you're not using a realistic gaming load. 3D Mark uses a realistic gaming engine. It is literally built on a gaming engine. So any overclock you do is going to be representative of the real world. Now, I still have a little bit of headroom here, as you can see. I'm only at 96% of my TDP. So I'm gonna try increasing the frequency a little bit to around 1970. I know I can do 1970 megahertz without it going crazy. So 1972, that's a pretty decent overclock. So I'm gonna leave that and I'm gonna take a look here. And as you can see, our power consumption has dropped by a margin of 20 watts. And now our perf cap reason says idle because we are not limited by power anymore. So guys, this is how you do proper undervolting and proper overclocking. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on 3D Mark, you can also use this benchmark. I will put it on screen now, and it is the exact same. It just runs on an older engine. It runs on DirectX 11. It doesn't run on DirectX 12, but it's essentially the same exact thing as 3D Mark, but free. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. This is the tutorial on how to do NVIDIA undervolting and overclocking, and I'll see you guys next time.